sense to you. Okay, now going into question 9, we're now going to switch over really. We're going into our unit 3, which is our heat. Um, so it's quite good just to change gear in your brains. Think of that. Um, we'll pull up our, actually, <coughs> where our heat formulas are down over here. These are our formulas that we have for for heat, these three. Uh, we'll see if we need them. We're not quite sure if we need them, but it's good just to be thinking of that. Now this question over here is, uh, I thought was quite tricky and I, I wasn't too sure if I agreed with the answer. The answer for this is A. Uh, let's just read it through and discuss it a bit. So box that is at rest with respect to the horizontal ground contains a fixed quantity of an ideal gas. The internal energy of the gas is U and its temperature is T. The box is now made to move at a constant speed with respect to the ground. Which of the following gives the change of any to the internal energy and the temperature of the gas after the box has moved for some time? Now I think the some time is quite important. So uh, you've got a box, it's stationary, it's got a, a gas inside it. Um, in actual fact, because it's a ideal gas, um, the internal energy, the the U, um, the U is all made up of of kinetic energy. The internal energy is uh, equal to the kinetic energy, because with an ideal gas, we we assume that there are no intermolecular forces. So basically, it corresponds to the kinetic energy, which is proportional to the the temperature the average kinetic temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules now that is to deal with velocity now um, we would because it goes at a constant velocity we are saying I think they what they are thinking is that there is no change um, in those particles those particles but with respect to the their surroundings they are going at a constant velocity the box will be going at a certain velocity and the particles inside will be going at a certain velocity so when we look at the velocity in relationship to the box it will be the same so that's I think why they're saying no change for over a period of time I would think though initially to accelerate this box uh, you would get some change in temperature but maybe over a period of time that would equalize out with the surroundings Anyway, A is the correct answer for that. I thought that was not the greatest question. Alright, question 10. Object P has a mass MP and specific, a, specific heat capacity CP. Object Q has a mass MQ and a specific heat capacity of CQ. The temperature of each object increases by the same amount. Which of the following gives the ratio of the thermal energy transferred to object P, thermal energy transferred to object Q? So uh, we're going to have the thermal energy. Um, we obviously are using this formula over here. So the temperature of each one increases by the same amount. So it increases by the same T. So we have Q um, for P will equal M, P, C, P, T and we're going to divide that by uh, Q, Q uh, that will equal M, Q, C, Q, T those should cancel um, and so we should get uh, for that that it would be B that was a pretty straightforward sort of question Question 11. For two objects to be in thermal equilibrium, they must be. Um, now, this is it over here. They must be at the same temperature. Um, I mean, obviously, you get, if we just take a room, for instance, just take the room that I'm in now. If I measured all the objects here, 
uh, they would all be at the same temperature. The, there would be a thermal equilibrium. One object is not transferring any energy to the other. They don't necessarily have to be in contact with one another. Uh, there are different ways of transferring that energy to, to equalize the, uh, to become into thermal equilibrium. So it would be D.